danger, darkness, pleading for, waiting for, God's divine intervention. Welcome to the Renaissance Gathering, coming to you on the fourth Sunday of Advent from Washington, D.C. In the midst of threats, God gives the promise of his divine intervention, an intervention that will silence the curses from foreign, domestic, and spiritual enemies. In Isaiah 7, verse 14, we read, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. It is stunning to note that each of the prophetic announcements of the coming of Christ as the Messiah take place during very dark and troubled times when faithlessness and fear ruled the day. God's promises are always made and fulfilled as a sign of his great faithfulness. Isaiah then prophesies, For the Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not say a conspiracy concerning all that this people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble. They shall fall and be broken, be snared and taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples, and I will wait on the Lord who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Like Isaiah, we must take our stand in faith with and for the children that the Lord has given to us. We must guard and protect them in the mother's womb, the place that God intended to be the safest place in the world. Tragically, as with every fallen society, this has not been the case in our own nation. That is why God chose the womb of the Virgin Mary for his son to be born into the world. Isaiah continues to warn and describes the times then and now in verses 19 and 20 and when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? Isaiah then proclaims to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. You can hardly walk a block or two in this capital city without seeing a sidewalk sign or storefront window with words promoting psychic or tarot card readings and even mediums, those who claim to speak to the dead. Once again, when an individual or a nation turns away from the light of Christ, they always turn toward the darkness and a progressively darker darkness. Sin is always progressive, just as is darkness. Hell is even described as outer 
darkness, a place of the greatest sorrow and loss. As in Isaiah's time, so we too live in a time where darkness appeals to people much more than the light. Thank God we can now come to the moment which we celebrate this and every Christmas. Jesus is the light of God's glory who obliterates the darkness. Darkness flees when the light of God's glory appears. It is important to know that a single simple candle's flickering flame can be seen in total darkness up to 30 miles away. The world needs to recognize God's intervention that came through the birth of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Isaiah 9 verse 2 declares, with the highest authority, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death Upon them a light has shined. Today, you can be the reflection of the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wants to use you through the anointing of the Holy Spirit to intervene, to tear down spiritual strongholds and spiritual principalities and shine his light in the dark recesses of individual lives educational, medical, and religious institutions, even governments. The next two powerful verses written by God's prophet Isaiah literally shout and proclaim loudly the great extent and fullness of God the Father's divine intervention in time and space by sending his only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, to the earth to save mankind. George Frederick Handel, one of the world's greatest composers, once again declared God's prophetic promises in one of the most anointed, monumental musical works of all time, Handel's Messiah, with these words from Isaiah 9, For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. As it was when it was prophesied, and then when it was fulfilled with Christ's birth and ministry and the empowering of the Holy Spirit, I proclaim with the prophet Isaiah, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Anticipate and fully allow the intervention of the Lord God Almighty to flow into and through your life. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.